reach out to somebody and ask them to invest. Um, even if they say no, may I know that I'm going to be successful? Yeah. Whether they say no or not, or yes, right? So just telling them is like so that the next time I need something from them, they will remember that I came and they said they could know and I did it. So that it will be easier next time. And that just gives me that confidence to reach out regardless. Thank you, Chief. I'll say, trust your instincts, trust your gut. It somehow knows what you're capable of. The minute you have that knowledge to take a step, don't second guess yourself. Just do it. Block everything and anyone that will want to put doubt. Just do it. And in the long run, like now, when I look back, those, those, those were like deciding moments when I had that gut feeling, go ahead and do this. And I did it. And that was it. And glad to ask you. So, um, I want to tell my story now, Chica. So, the conversation with Chica led to me basically one, seeing my first million dollars in actual cash in my account, and two, buying my first house. So, you know, Chica isn't a public speaker, but if you go to him for counsel, he'll actually spend the time. And there was one time I was like, man, all this internet money, I'm raising money, I'm raising money there, it's company money, it's not my money, so I'm like, where's my own share of this thing? And I spoke to Ch uh, Chica and he was like, ah, you need to sell some of your shares to investors. That's the day I did my life to change. <laughs> but, like, and then I actually went and I started posting it online. I made it a public thing. So Chico will say it in private to people that he trusts, he knows will actually, you know, be, uh, uh, what's the word for? Be like moving with information. But me, I'll be like, yo, guys, guess what? Like, you can actually sell your shares to investors and make money before you have any big exit. That's the rule now. It just, like, I would say 95 of the people back in 2013 didn't know that was the case. It was actually frowned upon the very way. When Chica said that I had done it, me too, I'll do my own. I'm going to make some money, I'll buy a house, my dad's happy, my family is secure. Then I should share the information with the rest of the world, and then people can start to change. And I find that, and I find this over and over again that probably, no, I would say the tech community is so open, people are so like transparent, people know that. If they come to me, I will give them the, the my answer. Because they know that in the end, we don't know where everyone will be. There's people I've there's people I've invested in. There's people I've helped them do their pitch test. I'm not an investor. But I come to a half a million dollars. I'm like, my money is supposed to be in there, but it's fine. There's a time where I'll go to different money they'll send some money my way. But I think most industries are as transparent as that. You know, they are they're, they're pretty close. And I think that's one great thing about tech is that if you ask people, they'll give you um, and there are really amazing ways to actually unlock the value just by asking those questions. We're really unafraid what the answers will be. But it's the same way that if you ask those of questions, if someone asks you those questions as well, you have to, you're almost compelled to share. So I find that, like, definitely in tech, very peculiar in the sense where the more questions you ask, the more answers you get, the better quality you'll get, the better in terms of your ability to maximize your outcome going forward in life, which is, I would say, tech is going to be close. Thank you. Thank you. We have so many great questions coming in. The next one is for you specifically, Jason. It says, how is the Roco TV partnering with or handling competition from Netflix, and are there any technological advancements in the pipeline for the Roco TV? So it's interesting. People always ask that question. So, Iroko's number one market has always been North America, the US. Netflix has been here for the last 10 years, we're still growing in North America, right? So I think first and foremost, when there's two types of people who watch Hollywood, actually there's three types of people who watch Hollywood in very simple terms. There's people who just don't watch it, the end. They're not my customers, they can go about their lives, that's fine. There are people who are almost like tourists, and they might watch one or two movies, like every month or so, you know, almost like it's an event for them to watch a movie. You know, these days everyone's streaming on Instagram, hey, look at me, I'm watching a movie. It's like whatever. But yeah, sure, like, that's what they're doing these days. But 
But then the core, the core knowledge was people. They're, they're my people. They understand that, you know, the, the 10 hours per month of Nollywood content that Netflix or Amazon puts up, that will be burned in one last weekend. So for me, it's about the type of stories that we tell. Um, you know, in Africa, and I think globally, some of the most, I would say, most powerful stories in Nollywood are the traditional ones, the epic ones, the ones that remind us who we are as, as people, the ones that aren't about the lefty, coin, big boys, big girls, like that's, that's not Nigeria, that's not most people's experiences. And I remember like, my, my wife, she, she, wanted to, she wanted to do a, um, a series here in the US, and she was asking questions about what could she do. Um, this was like, actually, you know what, I know what I'll do. The number one issue for most people who have immigrated to the US is visa problems. It's, it's sort of visa, green card issues. There were a thousand stories amongst them. Go to Amazon, go to Netflix. So for me, they're not telling real stories, they're telling stories of some aspirational thing that no one really cares about beyond that way. We fell in love with our own stories because they reflected us as people, they reflected our beliefs, they reflected our faiths. We saw ourselves in those movies, in those series. So for me, as long as we stick to making stories that reflect the true, the true authentic, like Nigeria, the true authentic people, the true authentic, the women's opinion, Edo, etc. So, you know, I don't know if there's going to be Edo people here, but Edo people are some of the proudest people that you will ever meet. Full stop in this world. Super proud, super cultured, super, um, super aggressive in terms of the their culture. Very few people have actually tried to capture that culture and put it onto film. There was a series uh, that we did, Blood of the Moon. In order to shoot that series, we went to the Logic Palace to ask his permission. You know, these are old school people, you have to do some sacrificial things, take the girl, take the things. Women who at that time in the month can't go there. It's like a very specific thing. But you know, when they when they saw that, when they saw it was done the right way, for an ego, for an ego uh, person to do a Benin story about the, the, the palace and their culture, you can't you can't fuck about it, you have to do it right. They did it right. Governor Obaseki is begging my wife to do different trainings. In fact, obviously, uh, Chico is there. Uh, they're basically trying to give her, like, that give her space to do the film village there. Like, she does trainings, 300 people a year um, in Edo State. So they saw that one authentic story, which was their own story. And they ended it. So, I think this is as well. So, like, if you're in Nigeria, if you're in Lagos, there's a high likelihood you're speaking about. If you're doing Nigerian content and you don't have a Yoruba, Pigeon, Igbo, like the big languages flavor to it, then you're just wasting your time. So for at least us, we really focused on like authentic culture, authentic content that literally like it talks to you. It shouldn't move you. You shouldn't go away and just go to the club and you should sit back and think about that thing that you're doing. Thank you very much, Jason. So before we go to the next question, I do want to highlight something that folks here may not be aware. So who saw the intro video about Rapturance when we started this session? You all weren't paying attention? You should play it again. So we might have to play it again. But to, to emphasize, I think, the importance of uh, authentic stories that are true to our origin. Now, I remember the day, Jason is a good friend. So I remember the day he, he told me he was going to uh, start up a new company, Raptures. I was like, why do you think a comic book company or platform would sell? You know, and once he told me about the authenticity of our stories, and you know, sometimes there's things that we need to remind ourselves, it immediately reinforced that you know we have a lot of stories that can help drive successful companies such as Raptures. So, I want to highlight that Raptures has a virtual reality component to this session where we're going to ask questions of VR to confirm for my amazing, beautiful session hosts. Is that so happy? Absolutely. Are you guys ready to go to the metaverse? Yeah. Woo, let's go. All right, and then let's go ahead and go to virtual reality land. I should have a bit to that. That's cool. so. Never mind it. We're going back to here. <laughs> 
So, um, this will take like two minutes, but, like, I'm going to finish accent. My wife has a Nigerian accent. My children, eight, six, four, they have American accents. How the fuck are my children have an accent? No, 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 no. So, I'm looking at it because I'm like, where are they? They're not getting it from school. They get it from YouTube. They get it from TV. How can 1.4 billion black people literally hand in their generation over to people who have no concept of our culture, how we raise our kids, yeah. who we are as people, what our religion is like? What have we done? There's no black kids' animation. Fucking breaks my heart. How have we done that? How have we done that?
So whatever you are doing, just know that you're not just doing it for yourself, you're doing it for your future generations. You're doing it to, one, make money, very important, but to inspire people about you as well. Me, in my life, I just want Nigerians to win. Simple as that. Ego first, Nigerians, I mean, you must win. Because right now, we are just too poor as a collective, and it, it, something needs to change. Something needs to change very, very quickly. So I want everybody to win. Whether you're winning in the group of world, anti will help you on that one. My own is 10x world. But either way, we just need to win. We need to do better. We need to do better as a people. We just need to do better. Totally agree. So I think from the real world to the metaverse. That's ready? Let's go. Nina, are you ready? Get money, get into the market, into the IT space, 
That's because we are just waking up. People will say, we wanted to get the boat to take. So, you know, when I was in like I say, 2000, I was in school in Johnson City, there would be like, every year, like 50 or 100 people from India will come and do masters. And I was like, why, if you can code already, why do you do masters? You don't need a master's if you can already code, you come to the master's, spend two years. I didn't understand that H1, um, OPT, and that that was really, and that there's like, you know, there's a pathway that 80,000 people have been legally migrated. Meanwhile, rich people's children will go to school in America and study pre med and they've been hustled to get into med. We just didn't understand. What I'm trying to make is that India has 3.9 million people living in India, writing software from outside of India. This has been going on for three decades. More than more. So, because now we have, we know some people around us, it looks as if everybody around us is going to think, ah, this past about it. No, it has been going on since we just entered it. And it's, so, so, so I just want to play the fallacy. It just feels like it's the hot thing now. It's not it's the hot thing. Three decades, three decades ago, right? So, forget about that. That's apart from the fact that um, more developers are going to be needed. Um, and, and, you know, and to Jason's point, um, the way you set yourself apart in tech is by what you consider, what you can really describe as leadership. Um, having digital knowledge. Because value creation is tech. That's the same way that manufacturing was value, was the heart of producing stuff uh, um, 30 years ago, 20 years ago, right? Now it's, it's writing software. But, so in the companies, it used to be that the developers are the people in the basement, the, the people that were to tell them what's right and what's right. But now, they want the developers to talk, to tell them what's possible. And that's where I'm training, we're training the developers in Nigeria. We have, we really emphasize the leadership and um, communication and just understanding problems and just different things because um, this is a gap there, right? People still just learn the technical things. Um, and the business people, the founders, want the developer to talk, tell us what's possible, figure things out. So that's where you can really like enter and just go very fast to talk. If you can, you can code, you know what's possible, but then you can talk and ideas and challenge. You know, it's a perfect example of that. So a few years ago, I had a mentor at Airbnb. They have a product design. He gave me an example where the founder of Airbnb was trying to work on a project. He had 50 engineers, it was a priority of the, of, the, of the company to increase the usage by like 20%. So we had like you know, six months, sprints, big sort of like you know, support the entire organization to build this. They built it, moved it like 5%. So it was a failure internally. But there was one guy, one junior Indian guy, he was like, let me just see if I can create a, like a, what is it, like a, a photo format where it increases the speed of the loading time of the pictures of the, uh, of the location that you want to go and see. It took him two weeks by himself. No one asked him, he just did it. Let me just try and figure this out. When they pushed that, move you 50%. Because in the end, every of these pictures, right? That is a part of this picture. That guy became a star in every because he just took an example of one guy, a couple of weeks, let me just try and chase one little thing. CEO, founder, Visionaries, 50 people, couldn't even match what he'd done. No one else had to do it, he just did it. And I think that's what, that's what happens when you are in organizations, especially big organizations. Just do things that just feel natural to you, but you feel can move the leader on behalf of the company. And that's essentially how you build also. That's how you become full leaders, that's how people notice you. Thank you. Um, with that being said, we are at time, and our folks in the middle that you want to say bye to the audience before you leave. Thank you, yeah. Thanks, guys, for coming to our little world. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you didn't mind that in the best of us, because the market is down. Happy hours all day over here, guys. <laughs>
please don't leave because we have amazing things in store. Make sure you're checking the Google app. We have other things coming. We're going to go ahead and put the Rapture video back on the screen. It's available in the App Store, the Google Play Store. Get engaged, support black business, support evil business. Let's continue to build our community with what we've heard today. And let's go ahead and give them a round of applause. Thank you, Gabby. Thank you, guys.